Last video we looked at just a quick review of functions and now we're going to look at a question and this is from your Folden's book um, chapter 22 it's the first example um, I think I can't remember the exact page hang on I'll get it here for you page 442 page 442 so you have the solutions there as well but the best way to learn these questions is to actually practice as many of these as you possibly can so here we have a function, we have uh, f of x, and they've written it a different way, but they can also write f brackets f as f colon x is the function 3x squared minus 2x minus 7. In the domain, minus 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 3. Now this bit is important as well. This domain is basically all our possible x values the possible x values that we can pick so if they ask you to kind of graph a function the x values you use have to be between these values between minus 2 and 3 so in other words all the x values you're going to use are going to be minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 and you don't have to do any more x values other than the ones they've listed in the domain so the first question is to draw the graph. Well, if you want to draw the graph, you have your x values, but you need to get your y values. So the first thing you'll do is you'll use your equation, and it's a bit slow, but you have to do it. And you'll say, well, what's f of minus 2? And f of minus 2 would be 3 times minus 2 squared minus 2 times minus 2 minus 7. Type that into your calculator and you'll get an answer, you'll get the answer 9. So when x is minus 2, y is 9. And you repeat this for all your other input values until you end up with a table that looks something like this. When x is minus 2, y is 9. When x is minus 1, y is minus 2, and so on. And now you've got all your points, you've got your x values and your y values. So the next thing you do is you plot your graph. Now just a tip on plotting the graph. When you plot your graph, you're going to get points that look something like this. What you must not do is you must not get your, your uh, ruler and join this line to this line, this line to this line, and this line to this line. Because you should know that that's not what a quadratic function looks like. What you need to do is you need to use those points and you need to say, well, my quadratic function is probably going to look something like this. It's going to have a curve at the end and it's going to go up like that. So you need to make sure you draw a quadratic uh, functions graph. Don't join up all the dots. And when you join them up, you should get something like this, this black line here. And then that's half the question, but the rest of the question will be answering questions on this graph. So there is markings on this already, but I'll go through them one by one. So the first one is, find the value of f of 2.5. Now what you need to do is you need to identify, are they giving you the input or the output there? And if it's in the brackets, they're giving you the input, which means they're giving you the x value. So what they want to know is, well, what's your output? What's the y value when the input, the x value, is 2.5? So we go to our graph, we find 2.5, and we say, well, what's the value of y for that? So on our graph, 2.5 would be here. And this green line is done. And then we go up to our line, our curve. And we say, well, there's the value of y. Go across. And it's around there. So for part one, when our input is 2.5, our output is around, let's say, 6.7. And I'm going to do a squiggly line here because this is an estimate. Anytime you're reading anything from a graph, it's an estimate. And often they'll say to you, estimate from your graph. Question two then. Find the value of x for which f of x equals 3. So this time they're saying, what's the value for x for which f of x equals 3? Well, here, they're not giving you the input, they're giving you 
the output. So remember, this time you're going to go and you're going to look at your y value. Sorry, the pen is giving me a bit of bother here. You're looking for the you look for three on your y axis, and then you find the corresponding x value, your inputs. So on our y axis, here's three. Now, this line, if we draw a line the whole way across here, it actually meets the graph twice. It meets the graph here and here. So we actually have two answers. And our first answer is when y is 3, x could be, what's that? x is in and around minus 1.5. And, and on this side, when y is 3, x is in and around, well, that's 2.5, so 2.2. x is in and around 2.2. And I should do a squiggly line there again because it's an estimate. So that's part two. Part three then, the minimum value of f of x and the x value at which it occurs. So that's your minimum y value. Your minimum value of f of x is the minimum y value and the value of x that it occurs. So if we look at our curve here, what's the lowest y value? Well, the lowest y value is gonna be right down here at the bottom. And if we go across, the lowest y value looks as if it's minus 7.2 or something, say, 7.2, minus 7.2. That's the lowest value of f of x. And the x value at which that occurs will be this red line when we go up in and around x point 0 0.3. So that's number 3. Let's look at number four. Number four then, find the range of values for which x, for which three x squared minus two x minus seven is greater than zero. Now, it's the way that this question is asked that confuses people. What is three x squared minus two x minus seven? Well, that's what our function is. So what they're saying is, well, what are the values of our function that are bigger than zero. And that looks complicated at the start, but basically all we need to do is look at our graph, because our function is this graph here. And we need to say, well, what values are bigger than zero? And when you look at our graph, it's bigger than zero here, and it's bigger than zero here. And remember, I'm always talking about outputs here. Our outputs, what value are our outputs bigger than zero? What values of x are our outputs bigger than zero? So all we need to do is find what's the range of these values where it's bigger than zero. So when we look at our graph, it's getting a little bit messy here, but what color are we going to use? Blue. The values where it's bigger than zero are from here to here, and that's really messy, but that section, and also from here up to here. They're the values when it's bigger than zero. So... It's bigger than zero from minus two to about here. So it's bigger than zero between minus two and minus, let's say, 1.2 or something, around 1.2. Now, how do we write that? How do we write that range? Well, it's when x is bigger than minus two, bigger than or equal to minus 2, and bigger than or equal to minus 1.2. So that's the range of values from here to here, this section on our graph. But that's not the only kind of section where it's bigger than 0. If we look over here, it's also bigger than 0 from about here to here. So what's that, about 1.8 to about 3? So also from 1.8 to about 3. And remember, all of these are estimates because it's read from the graph. OK, so this is a long question, but there's one more part. Use algebra to answer parts 1 and 2 accurately. So one was find the value of f of 2.5.
and this time they're saying use algebra to get the actual answer and if you use algebra your answer is much much more accurate so our if f of 2.5 and we want to get the actual output accurately we go to our equation and we put in 2.5 so our equation was 3x squared minus 2 times x minus 7 and they're saying accurately find what f of 2.5 is well it's going to be 3 times 2.5 squared minus 2 times 2.5 minus 7 and when you put that into your calculator you should get 6.75 so when your input is 2.5 your output is 6.75 if we go back to part one what did we get reading from the graph we got 6.7 so that's our estimate, but if you want to do it really, really accurately, that's how you do it. And often in exam questions, you'll see they, they'll ask us to check. They'll ask us to check your answer using algebra, and this is how you check it. Now, part three is a little bit trickier, or part two. In part two, they say, the, you check part, this bit here, the values of x for which f of x is equal to three. Now we found out that the values of x for which f of x equals 3 are minus 1.5 and 2.2. So let's just write this down here. f of x equals 3. I don't know why the pen is going funny there. Remember what f of x is. f of x is... No, it's really going bad. 3x squared minus 2 times x minus seven and we want to find out well what values does this equation equal three and that's what you're doing here you've two you've two bits of information for f of x you have f of x equals three and you've f of x equals this equation so what you can do is you can put this and this equal to each other and you can say well when's three x squared minus twelve two x minus seven equals three. Really having a pen malfunction here, but we just have to keep going because we're 12 minutes in. Um, so we need to solve this equation. And when we're solving this equation, we have to have zero on one side and everything else on the other. So I'm going to take three away from both sides. Cancel. We have three x squared minus two x minus 10 equals zero. And I'm not going to solve this because the video is getting very long now and it takes a long time to put on YouTube. But if we want to solve this, it's in the form of ax squared minus bx plus c equals zero. So our a is 3, b is minus 2, and c is minus 10. So what we need to do is use your minus b formula, and when you use your minus b formula, you'll get two answers, as you always do with the minus b formula, you'll, you'll get x equals minus 1.52, and you'll get x equals 2.19. And if you look at the values we estimated earlier on, that part, we got minus 1.5 and 2.2. Minus 1.5 and 2.2, so very, very close. Our estimates were close.